What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and today we are going to be building a sheet metal break. So, what is a sheet metal break? What does it do? Basically allows you to bend uh, sheet metal at tight angles. Um, there's some that come inside of a hydraulic press, kind of like what Swag Off-Road makes. If you're bending plate that's like an eighth of an inch thick, the one we're going to be building is for bending like thin sheet metal, so call it 22, 24 gauge all the way up to maybe like 14 gauge probably be okay maybe a 12 we'll see but uh basically it's built out of some angle iron um to buy one of these is around 300 bucks i've spent about 50 dollars uh in materials um and that's gonna include some scrap uh so i'm pretty happy with that we're gonna basically build it to mount to this cool old welding table i have it's gonna basically mount to the slip and it's gonna allow us to build things like a center console for the blazer and a few other projects I have in mind. This is one of those tools that's like, if you don't have one, there's really nothing else that works quite as well. Um, but if you do have one, it really only has one real function, um, but it'll last you a lifetime. So the design that I'm using is uh, blatantly stolen from a guy named uh, Brian Olt. Ultreg, Ultorg, also on YouTube. I'll link to the original video down below. Uh, he made a slightly smaller version of this, but the design is the same. Um, it's not his design. This design has flowed around for a long time, um, but I used his videos and inspiration uh, for making mine, so I wanted to give credit. So basically, all you really need is a whole bunch of angle iron. We have a three inch uh, piece. I believe it's three, uh, no, it's three sixteenths. Um, and then we have two inch and inch and a half, which are one eighth. And uh, at least here it's sold in 10 foot pieces. So that's what I got. Um, we're gonna use most of the three inch, but the two and the inch and a half, you don't need nearly as much. Uh, and if you're making a smaller, like a 24 inch one, um, you can use less. We're gonna try to make a 36 inch unit. So basically what that means is I could put a piece of 36 inch sheet into it and bend it. That is our, our bending area is 36 inches. Um, which should fit nicely on this table. Uh, so I'm gonna start by cutting up all of the steel and then we'll uh, put it all together and I'll, I'll show you guys kind of how it assembles. So here's all of our rough cuts. This is three inch angle. Um, I made these 43. Basically you need whatever width you want to bend plus seven inches, three and a half inches on each side. Um, these are two three inch um, chunks that we're going to cut down you'll see later those will help secure the base and then this is going to be what we bend against basically i don't know this is the base and this is the bender or whatever if you will um, this is a quarter inch larger than the workpiece so mine are 36 and a quarter inch long so one two three four five six six pieces of steel is all you need uh, next we're going to start cutting them out uh, and making them fit together so here's kind of our base, um, just clamped together. Here's what we're cutting out. So on this side, we're gonna cut out this whole entire piece all the way out to three and a half inches. On this side, we're only gonna cut out this basically middle hinge part. This is half an, inches, half an inch from the middle line in both directions. And what's gonna live here is basically a bolt with, uh, basically a hinge uh, with a bolt through it that's removable. So I still need to buy the material to do that, but we can trim all these pieces out already. So this side will basically be missing this piece cut out to about three and a quarter. And this side will have it all the way cut out to here to three and a half. So as you can see, I've marked both sides of the base, uh, what they're gonna be. Now I need to unclamp them and then uh, cut out the uh, this middle part. The next step we gotta do is we gotta make the hinges. Basically what you're seeing here is a shaved down 5 8 bolt. Um, this is half inch black iron pipe, basically cut into three quarter inch slugs. It's gonna weld into here. I'm gonna make a second one. That way we can remove the pins. We can slide material in from the side if we need to um, and disassemble this thing pretty quickly if we need to. We're gonna trim this bolt down and just kind of make it fit over here. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up uh, the other one so that we can weld these pins in. All right, next step is we gotta weld our hinges in place. I basically have these centered uh, with each other. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little hinge, put it like that so the bolt head's pretty close to the end. And then basically two of these loops go to one side, two of the loops go to the other side, allows us to pull the bolt out if we need to. 
So nothing super special here. I'm just gonna make it into place both sides. Then we'll have a hinge that folds up. So there we go, hinges welded on. Um, they're not as nice and clean as I'd want them to, but we fold all the way over. Um, pretty much, what is that? 90 degrees, probably like 160, 170 degrees. And some of that might just be in flex. We can probably grind these bolts down a little further um, and uh, get more articulation out of it. Most of the stuff is going to be 90 degrees or right around there, so I'm not too worried and it does that super easily. So, next step is we've got to build the platen and then we can figure out where to weld all of our, or um, drill all of our holes. So our actual bending break is basically that piece of two inch that we cut with a piece of inch and a half basically put on it like that. Um, this will give us the forward face, so when you're bending, you bend against here, which gives us another 45 degree cut down. Um, and then if you remember, we made these little three, and a half, or three inch by one and a half inch tabs. These will be what we use to secure it down. As you can see, that fits in there pretty much perfectly. And so right now, I'm going to weld all of this up together. Um, and then we can figure out where all of our holes go. Okay, so this should make much more sense now, right? So this is our base and this is our bending material and you can see basically as this folds up it's going to fold up tight up against that and basically I'm just checking the gap on everything so we can go well past 90 degrees with this guy and what we're going to do now is we're going to drill bolt holes through here that basically will clamp these two materials together that will give us a nice firm clamp that way we can fold it up all the way I gotta check to make sure that this gap is right, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill out these holes slightly oversized, and that way we never have to worry about um, getting it perfectly centered. Another cool thing that the other guy did that I haven't been able to buy yet, but is you can put a set of springs in here. That way, when you release the bolt, it will um, spring up unless you slide the material out a little bit easier. And uh, maybe we'll add that later after the fact. But other than that, um, it's coming right along. So we have everything bolted in. You can see all I did was I welded in a set of nuts, set of bolts. Um, they'll loosen up over time, but one of these tools makes it super nice to crank it down and crank it up. Now we got to attach the arms. So again, I went super simple. I basically bought these threaded couplers. We're going to weld them right here, and then we're going to cut this 48 inch piece of three quarter in half, screw it in, uh, clean up the ends, and then we'll have 24 inch levers to pull up on. And after that, the last thing that remains is to figure out how we're gonna secure it to the table. So here's our completed bender. All that's left is to mount it to this table. Basically, I have about an inch and a half lip on either side of this eighth inch topper. And we're just gonna use that to build basically a sandwich plate so this slides on because all of the force is coming up this way, right? There's nothing that pulls it this way. So we'll just sandwich it to the table because um, obviously these C-clamps wouldn't really work very well. And I don't want anything that interferes with the channel path. Um, but as you can see with a 24 inch bar on it, I mean, it's totally one handed operation. So let me get this mounted to the table and uh, we'll bend some stuff. All right, so here it is in its completed glory. Folds all the way up. We got these guys welded in. Basically what I did was I used a piece of angle iron that basically sandwiches the side of this table under there. And then I added these tabs. We might eventually drill holes in here and so we can bolt it down to make it flush. Uh, but for now, all of the material I need to bend is, is less than 30 inches, which is the width of this table. So I just kind of put some, some vice grips on it for now. But uh, this is 10 gauge steel, which is pretty thick. And it bent it without any problems. Um, so let me get the camera set up. Let me go grab another piece of scrap and uh, we'll bend it up. Now, generally when you're talking about one of these sheet metal benders, you're talking about 20, 18, maybe 16 kind of automotive gauges of steel. This is a uh, 12 gauge steel. This is left over from the uh, uh, box truck or maybe even 10 gauge. Um, I think it's 12 gauge. Let's go with 12 gauge. 
Um, so we basically screw this up and I'm just gonna arbitrarily bend this. Um, this is where those springs that I was talking about would be really nice to have because they lift that material. So let's say we wanna make a bend right there. Um, we flip this into tighten. Snug this puppy down. And now all you have to do is grab these poles and bend. And like, that's gonna be a 90. So normally there's a little bit of springiness in the metal, so you wanna bend it a little bit past the angle that you want. Um, obviously this is one of those things that takes practice. Um, you're definitely gonna screw some stuff up before you get it right. So then let's say we were trying to make like a box or something. We could slip this back. Okay. So you slip this back right there and let's say that's where we want to make our next bend. Just take this. Boom. And now we have a custom made tortilla holder. So let me take this thing out and show it to you guys. So boom. Now obviously you can see the angle is a little bit off, but this one's pretty much perfect. And you can see that the bend radius here is really, really good. And uh, the thinner you go, the tighter you're going to get of a, of a bend radius. Now you can see this is, this is pretty tough material. Um, it's pretty heavy gauge. But this thing handles it no problem. Um, a smaller width item, say something that's maybe like a strap or something, I could bet I could bend eighth inch for sure on this. Maybe even uh, three sixteenths. Definitely quarter inch aluminum, probably would have no, no real trouble with this. Um, all in all, I'm super happy with it. Um, you guys will see this thing later on. We're gonna build a, uh, we're gonna build a center console for the blazer. And for that, I wanna be able to basically build a box. That's what the brake is for. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Max, this is Maxworks. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. Check out our build series for the adventure trailer for the blazer. And for a new upcoming project, they'll be online here pretty soon. Um, I'm excited. This worked out really well. All in all, including bolts and hardware, I spent probably about 80 bucks, uh, give or take. Um, and uh, all the instructions, you know, are kind of here in this video. I'll also link down below to the video that gave me the inspiration to build this. He has uh, a little bit more detailed drawings and stuff like that to help you guys out. Um, this can be used to build any width, I would say that if you're going bigger than a 36 inch break, I would probably use heavier wall material. There's already a little bit of flex in this 3 16ths um, over this run. He uses material to build a 24 inch break. Uh, I think that would work perfectly fine. Um, I would probably go up to a quarter or even maybe a little bit bigger um, on the uh, main mandrel. Man, it's hot here in Texas right now in the summer. I want to thank you guys for watching. Peace.